Welcome to Podcasting Power Hour with your host, Jeff Townsend, a.k.a. The Indie Podcast Father. I'm your co-host, Greg, from Indie Drop-In Network. Podcasting Power Hour is recorded live every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitter Spaces. Every week, an experienced panel of podcasters and other experts will tackle your podcasting questions. We will, of course, put links to all of our guests and any relevant information in the show notes. All right, let's get this party started. Welcome to Podcasting Power Hour. It is the 7th of November, and this is, this is Podcasting Power Hour. I'm Jeff Townsend. I've got the gift to gab and the fist to jab. I've been an underground podcaster since 2006, and you can't teach that. My co-host and best friend, Greg, is the oldest podcaster in the world, and you can't teach that. Bada bing, bada boom, realest guys in the room. How you doing, Greg? I don't, I don't, I don't know after that. Like, they get weirder every week. They just really do. Um, I know I'm not the oldest guy. In- oh. Sorry. I'm sorry. I had to. What? What is happening right now? The uh, so Jeff, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the gift of gab is. Is that do you just talk too much? Because I don't think you have that gift. It sounds like a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, hello, everybody. Oldest guy in podcasting on the mic, I guess. It's, it is an I honor mean, to be here. I'm just, I, I, I'm just so insulted. I can't stitch two words together. Oh, it's right. also because I keep talking. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> I mean, it's only it's only the intro of the show. I mean, yeah, yeah. Feel free. This is a long intro, though. Yeah, well, Ed, it's because you're making it long. So let's go to Jim Mallard. He has the Mallard Report for 10 Years Strong, a live podcast. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing pretty good, Jeff. How are you tonight? Oh, moving and grooving, baby. Ed Havens is here from the 80s movie How about podcast? that, Jeff? He I'm doing is, pretty good. How are you? Uh, you know, Fuck, I don't know, man. I'm hanging in there. All right, let's let's shine a light on Ed Havens here. Greg's going to cut it out anyway. Ed, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and I know that my best, second best friend in the room, Greg, is not going to cut me off this week because we've come to an agreement over respecting one each other, loving one each other, loving the community. This is the greatest podcasting power hour of all time. I can feel it. Ed, Ed, you're not supposed to tell anybody about that. My self-esteem was a little bit low. I was in Vegas. I mean, it, this was between <laughs> me and you. Hey, we didn't sign a contract. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. So actually, Ed will be a time. I think uh, Ed kind of ties into part of what we're going to talk about today. I do want to mention, uh, we'll just say Chuckles is here in our first ever podcast in power hour. That's who you hear hitting all the, uh, Sound effects. Um, I, there was order. one. There was. I was just trying to like add to the intro. It, it seemed like it needed something. She, <laughs> she was like, "Listen, this intro is so terrible. Let me let me press this button here." Oh, no, no, I was trying to be supportive of it. I was just. Uh, it was one time. Like there are people who like will just press buttons like for days. I just did it once. I feel like that's good as far as my self-control is concerned. I also muted myself for quite some time. You're welcome. I, I think you're displaying a solid use of the controls there. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's taken a lot of practice. Greg, Greg, today we're going to, yeah. tonight, today, tonight, tonight, whenever it is, we're going to talk about feed drops. Right. Now, this isn't like when you're feeding the fish, right? No, no, no. So, you know, I'm, uh, we're just going to make this a, a a self pro for the indie drop in network because this week was the very first week that uh, all my TV movie fandom shows are live. Now the advertising hasn't started quite yet because I still have things to do like websites and stuff like that, but fantasy fanatic horror fanatic and science fiction fanatic are officially live. They're in the apps. You can listen to them. You can hear Ed's show. He talked about Halloween one week l- later than I wanted to get it out, but it's still, I think, a good time to Who talk about the Halloween idea? movies. Who pitched that idea? Who pitched what idea? Ed doing Halloween. No, no, no. He he submitted like a month ago, you know, and my slow ass didn't get it out until this week. So it's no, what, what, what Jeff is trying to hint to that, it was him 
who suggested my doing the Halloween episode last year. Oh. And for a while, it was my biggest episode ever. So he's just trying to get proper credit yeah. in a public forum that's going to go out into the world. I so see. once again, for the 17,000th <laughs> time, thank you, Jeff, for giving me the suggestion. You're the best. I love you. Yeah. I love you, too. Yeah, yeah. So so that is officially the first episode on Horror Fanatic, which um, for those of you who don't know who the, what the Indie Drop Network does, it's 100% a feed drop network other than shows that are community based like podcasting power hour and things I do with Jeff and other people about podcasting, but the show shows are all about podcasters. So should I get into that's what a feed drop is? Yeah, that's us. It's all of us. Yeah. Get into it, man. What is a feed drop? Yeah. So a feed drop is, it's pretty simple. It's when you take an entire episode of your show and you give it to another podcaster to play on their show. So it's very simply kind of like a test drive. Now we're going to get into all of the best practices with feed drops. And I can talk about some of the performance I've had with feed drops when it works, when it doesn't work. Um, but essentially it is exactly that it's an episode of your show on someone else's show so that their fans can hear it and understand, you know, kind of what a full episode is. And if they like it, hopefully the host of that show is kind enough to put some links in the show notes to follow you. So that's what a feed drop is. Cool. Yeah. Jim Mellard, what do you know about a feed drop? It sucks when your RSS feed drops, you know. I'm just kidding. Uh, not Well, I used to do a podcast network back in the day that you'd kind of put all your shows together. You'd put your shows out and then he'd mix them all together but that was kind of well then uh, what is that feed burner went away and it kind of all went to hell in a handbasket so but it was pretty cool back in the day but that's been six years wow isn't that like the pandora thing kind of what what do you mean oh you mean when it just plays rant like random like like a radio station yeah yeah so so feed drops should not be used like that so let's get that kind of off the off the you know out of the way how I use feed drops is probably a lot like a radio station or a lot like Pandora, but it, it is not the way feed drops traditionally work. I took that idea and created Indie Drop In just as kind of a way to help podcasters, and I thought it would work, and so far it has worked. Um, but thank you, <laughs> no problem. But for for but for most podcasters, you want very few feed drops in your feed. I mean. Think about if you do a monthly show or if you do a, a, you know, if you do a a weekly show, maybe one quarter, you don't want too many in there. And um, it's really up to you to figure that out. There's no, there's, you know, one of the things about podcasting is, is, you know, even if somebody says their best practices are really just best practices for most people, you can break every one of these rules. And, you know, if you have a good plan, perfect, you know, write a blog article so we can all learn from it. But what I've found is that if there's too many feed drops in somebody's show, the uh, audience starts to get pissed. And, um, you know, they, then, then when they get an episode notification, they don't know if it's you or if it's another feed drop or if you're using their subscription as like a marketing channel. So, if you've if you ever subscribed to like a Wondery show, you know they do a pretty good job of this. Some some people say it's too much, but um, yeah, I think it's not bad. They'll they'll feed drop in uh, their shows in in feed for other ones. And most most podcasting networks really utilize feed drop, so uh, it, it's a good tool for the network effect. Well, and it's and it's like uh, cost efficient, right? Yeah, it costs nothing, and if you're you know, if you have a host like Captivate or something that has feed drop features, it might not even take any effort. Yeah. Cool. You're not spending your money. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can talk really quick about um, how to choose a show for right. a feed drop. Is that, is that a good place to go, Jeff? No, I think it's perfect because uh, I think a lot of people get a little conflicted on the uh, promoting their stuff and who they what they should promote it on and who they should promote it with. So yeah, I think it's a good place to start. Yeah. And I, I got really good at this 
um, because of indie drop in, because all I do is feed drop. So I can see when things work pretty immediately. And I think Jeff, you feed dropped on true crime, which has like a million something downloads. And I said, I think I warned you, right. That, Hey, you're going to get very few referrals from this because you're not a true crime show, even though this is an interview with who was it, like captain of true crime garage. Is that it? Yeah, one of the most true, yeah, true crime, popular true crime podcasters. Now the que- now the 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 question is is did you get anything? Because I don't I don't know if you got anything. No, I don't I don't I don't recall getting. Obviously, I didn't expect to, but I mean, I don't I don't recall getting much of anything from it because you really uh, you kind of have a way of checking it with your primary download of iHeart, right? So yeah, I didn't so see the results from that at all. Yeah, so I'll say one interesting thing though. Uh, let's see, fourteen thirty. I mean, your your uh, subscriber uh, link has forty three clicks, which um, what I found is for somebody to go into the the show notes and actually click the link, it may be one in ten, one in seven. Very few people go in the show notes and click the link, and um, I've talked to people about this and I've put in surveys and all sorts of stuff. And how many dropping. downloads does it have? You're saying only out of all the downloads it's had since it, it's existence. It's only had 43 P- clicks on the link clicks on the subscribe link. Uh, I can look to see how many it's ha- it has, but I'm not going to look right the second. No, I'm just saying. So it is that like mine was even lower than normal. Oh my gosh. It's way, 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 way lower. So, um, you know, the true crime show gets a lot of referrals, uh, much more than, than, like comedy is my least is my least amount of referrals because comedy is so subjective and uh you, you know like you'll there's no such thing as like a generic comedy show they're all so different they have different hosts they have different styles um so that one's the, that one's the hardest but I, i'm sure your show has i'm sure that show that you submitted has 15 or twenty thousand downloads something around there so it, so here's the thing what, we're, what i'm going into here with you so it doesn't, it, the downloads aren't bad on it. But no, the, down, it, the downloads I, are I didn't great. See that, yeah, the downloads are great, but I didn't see the conversion on my end. And why do you think that is? Well, the reason, yeah, and this goes into why, what shows you should pick, right? So the reason I, th- I think that is, and, um, you know, you're, you're always kind of go with your gut a little bit, but um, it's because the true crime fans I've marketed to people who are looking for true crime podcasts. So the funnel of listeners is very, very specifically true crime listeners. So even though they they enjoyed the hell out of an interview with captain, there's pro- there was very few of them that actually wanted to embark on a show about pod, you know, about the stories of podcasters that are not true crime podcasters. So they heard it. I'm sure they, you know, I'm sure they enjoyed it. That show's got, that episode's got, you know, good retention, but the conversion, you know, there just was no reason for them to convert to a listener of Indie Podcaster, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I know we talked about, talked about it beforehand. Like, I think the big thing was, how was it going to download, right? Like doing an interview style uh, on that. This normally has like a narrated or, or detailed events of a true crime. Whereas it was focusing on a true crime podcaster per se, so I thought that was interesting. But then, yeah, the the effect of that was, yeah, just they didn't come listen to my podcast, even though they enjoyed the the episode that you shared. Yeah, and this is a this is a good learning because I've tested this a couple of times. So one of my good friends runs uh, Obscure History, popular history podcast, and he did a uh, kind of obscure historical true crime episode. It was like, I think it was like a three part. It was good. And he did it specifically to, su- to submit it to Indie Dropping. So he put it out on his feed first and then, you know, we let a couple months go by and then he submitted it to me and it was very similar to the same effect as your show. Like they just were not into it. It, it, by the way, it had over a hundred percent retention that episode. Like it is one of the best episodes that I have for retention because it's a great show, but the listeners still were like, meh, you know, history show, not for me. 
So yeah, you have 17,342 downloads on the captain episode, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that's good, but that just goes to show you that this has to be done in the proper way. Yeah. It didn't do as well as the one before it, which is 18,240, but it crushed the next one, which only has 15,047. So either you pissed off a bunch of people and they left <laughs> or, uh, or the next episode just wasn't very good, which is uh, more likely because it, it cruises back in the 17, 18 range a couple episodes later. You know, this is interesting to me because I've dabbled with this and I'll give you an example of when I did this before. Oh man, it's probably 10 years ago. I had a local podcast actually uh, where I lived and <clears throat> there was another lady in the, this is a big city. This was actually in Washington, Washington state area. So the lady had a big podcast there about like cooking and stuff like that. And I had a podcast about the local community stories and people, events, et cetera. And I actually got her to feed drop one of my episodes into her podcast. And it made a huge, huge improvement on my, I mean, it was great for me. I, I gained a lot from it because it, you're thinking like, oh, well, you know, his, this is about cooking, right? But this was a local crowd. So they're able to get something more local in addition to so that's an example of another thing outside of your network that worked out for me. And I think this is a strategy that uh, like Jor Jordan Harbinger, as far as our advertising on podcasts and stuff. But, but I think this is like proof that if done right, it really can work. Yeah, for sure. So go ahead. You don't have to, you can, you don't have to put your hand up. Sorry. I don't want to be rude. Um, no, you're fine. So I'm actually like learning a lot about YouTube. I know it's kind of off topic, but like a lot of the people who say like, if you want to grow your channel, they, you need to pick a niche and like comedy is not really like a niche. It's more of like something that you add to a niche is from like what I understand about like picking. Don't get great started here. Yeah. No, no, that's a, no, that's an amazing question actually. Yep. yep. It kind of relates to, I guess what I was kind of where where I was going but no go go ahead Greg I think Bromigos came up here to speak too so we'll go to them after yeah 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 no no problem I mean I think we're getting we're getting in the thick of it which is great um but you know I launched comedy comedy on indie drop in um you know for that very reason like I felt like it was not a niche it wasn't it wasn't um it, it was my attempt to kind of break out of of a very solid niche, like true crime or like paranormal stories. And it's been the hardest show to market because I don't know who to market it to. Um, it's been the hardest Which show. Which is crazy, Greg, because it's like the top category in all of podcasting. O only because it's a catch all. That's the exactly, problem. Exactly. It's not, it's not because people wake up in the morning and think I'm going to go find a comedy podcast. Um, at least I don't think, I mean, maybe some people do, but, um, what I found though, is that, is that these shows that are consistently funny, they're, cons you know, their tone is consistent. They do kind of the consistent stuff. Those convert higher. So, I mean, it's when the top, it's when the, it's when the show doesn't have a personality, it doesn't have a, like a vibe, um, that's when it, that's when it seems to struggle. And I, and I don't know if it's like the X factor, it's hard to explain, but, um, if you look at the, you know, TikTok is a good example of this. If you, if you scroll through TikTok, you're going to find podcasters that have posted, you know, videos on TikTok and nine out of time, not to times they're going to be comedy podcasters. And you start to look like I, I'm interested in, and advertising and promoting on TikTok. So I always dig, I always dig into these to see if they're celebrity or whatever. And, but a lot of times they're just, I mean, they're just consistent. It's not like news and events. Like it's hard to describe, but they have a style. It's, it's kind of unique. They've cut out a little niche where it's, I don't know, on being on the road with comedy and talking about all the stuff that, that goes on, which is a lot of them. You know, they're on the road doing stand up and the podcast is about that journey. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll just watch my Twitter. I'll find the next time I find one on TikTok, which will probably be tomorrow. I'll, I'll post it and, and you can you can see what what they do. 
it's easier to grow your audience when you have that uh, like a physical audience I had these little cards made and I if somebody comes up to me like after I do a set I'll just give it give them like hey if you like my comedy you'll probably like my podcast as well yeah I feel I feel like that's the path a lot of these people take because I find them and they're always they're always um you know they're not I wouldn't say they're celebrities but they've always got some sort of gigs going on and they're just in the comedy scene significantly now there's all sorts of different kinds of comedy show. Like some of the ones that resonate are like, like the mom and the parents comedy shows resonate really well. The, um, you know, the game, like the game, the game comedy ones resonate really well. Um, it, it just, it just, it, it's hit or miss in the comedy show for me. And I haven't really been able to figure out like what, what my audience likes. I really think they listen to it. It's probably the purest form of a feed drop because they listen to it and they go, meh, that one sucked. And they get no clicks or the, or, or the very next one, which was exactly the same kind of show that I had on a month ago that got no clicks, but this one got, you know, 200 clicks on the subscribe link or whatever, or 300 clicks on the subscribe link. And the correlation, I just, it's such a, such a tough, tough niche. Yeah. So, so the more, the moral of the story is you got to find podcasts that you feel like have your audience. They're not like, like you said, they're not the bro, like, like, like you, it's not the comedy club where it's the five friends that are always up on stage, right? You got to find those, those podcasts where you feel like they're your people. Then you do a feed drop swap with them and magic will happen. Yeah. Um, or just having them on your show as like a guest too. Yeah. I, I don't think that that's as effective though. As a feed drop. Yeah. I think, I think feed drop is the number one and guesting, guesting maybe, maybe yeah, I like directly doing that. second. Podcasting power hour is part of Indie drop-in network. If you are a podcaster looking to grow your listeners, check out indiedropin.com. Indie Drop-In is always free, and we have opportunities right now for comedy, true crime, scary, and paranormal podcasts. Just go to IndieDropIn.com to learn more. Uh, let's go ahead to Matt and the Bermigos. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good couple of weeks here. I missed you guys last week. Yeah, we missed you too. Well, not really. <laughs> not Greg was passing out Halloween candy. Lie to me. Yeah, I, I, sh I shouldn't lie. I had a good <laughs> Halloween. Well, yeah, I hope everybody's been doing good. So I just I just want to make sure I'm understanding the topic. Did I miss something? Net, last week we weren't, we didn't have a power hour because it was Halloween. Oh, okay. Now you're caught up. Yeah, thanks. The more you know. Anyway, I just want to make sure I'm understanding the inside actual, jokes. I want to make sure I'm understanding the actual topic that we're covering here so like basically a feed drop is for instance if you don't upload an episode that week you can always rely on i guess for lack of better terms shows that you're friendly with to to use you know a previous show of theirs and put it onto your feed as a way of kind of promoting them and also making sure that your audience gets content on a weekly or whatever period basis that you post your podcast. Am I right in what, in that assumption? Because I feel like I might have missed something. So, I want to make so sure I'm it more yes, but that is maybe that is a secondary benefit, right? So if you're going to take some time off, just take some time off, right? Like, I think that that's a, that's an important topic. You can absolutely choose that time to do a feed drop. It makes totally total sense. But the best thing to do is do feed drop swaps because it's it's good for it's good for everybody and uh, it's not you know they're not just like doing you a favor right to fill content because what you really want is you want your show on their show not not the other way around right because you're gonna bleed some aud you could you could potentially bleed some audience to that new show. So you want to make sure you get a little, um, you know, quid pro quo, so to speak. 
Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And I, and I'm asking that question because uh, this, this podcast for Amigos doesn't necessarily have issues like that. It's more 69 whiskey that has that issue. Cause like, you know, we didn't put an episode this week and I never even heard of a feed drop or knew the concept of it until this discussion tonight. So I'm like, man, if only we had the opportunity to do a feedback swap or feed drop swap, excuse me, with, say, a show in 69 Whiskey's niche or similar to it, where it's like, wow, well, at least we could have put out some content, even though it wouldn't be out. But we're also, you know, helping out a show, find their audience. And in addition to that, um, we would also be putting our content on their uh on their feeds as well. Yeah. What I like, what I like to do for feed drops is I like to do it, uh, at an abnormal time. So to me, that's the perfect indicator to your audience that it's something different, right? So if every, it, let's say you come out with it every Monday morning or Monday afternoon or whatever, whatever it is that you come out on your schedule, if, if you're doing it to, um, if you're doing it cause you're taking a week off, you're going to want to record a different intro than if it's a, um, a regular swap. So let's say your show comes out every Monday and you're going to take a week off. You call Jeff and you go, Hey, uh, can I get a, let me get a show of yours to fill in a slot. So my audience doesn't get, um, tired. And that's a good, it's a, it's a good use, but it's not, it's not, you know, the desired use. So you would say in your intro, you would say, Hey, everybody, I'm taking, you know, we're taking the week off, but, I think you'll like this episode from Jeff. You know, he talks about doing this with whiskey and, and uh, you know, we'll be back next week, but if you love Jeff's show, feel free to give him a follow. I put a, put his, you know, website in my, in the show notes. All right. You know, see you later. Talk to you next week. Fine use of it, but it's way more effective when it's like on a Wednesday and you go, Hey all, um, I really love Jeff's podcast and we decided since we, we probably have similar audiences that you would like his show and, and his audience would like our show. So we picked out this episode specifically for you. I think you're going to love it. Uh, listen to it, you know, send me a tweet. Let me know what you think. And, uh, and, and, you know, here we go. Then at the end you go, you know, uh, ho- hope you like that. Ho- ho- you know, I hope you like that episode. Don't forget to give Jeff a follow, put his link in the show notes and let me know if you like these feed drops, if we should do more of them, you know, tweet a show that, that you think we should, you know, we should trade swaps. You you know what I mean? Like you have to, it's way more effective if you say, I like this show and I think you would too, than it is, Hey, I'm taking the week off. Check out this placeholder that I jammed in the feed. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And I, I'm glad that you put it the way that you did, because I was thinking about that at, before I hopped on the mic about like, you know, how would that even be intro? Like, do you make it like, oh, we're not doing a show this week, but here's someone that you know, someone that's a placeholder. Or do you actually make it say, quote, I guess, for lack of better terms, more genuine and say, hey, this guy's show is great. He, he we, we talk about similar subjects. You know, for all we know, they could have been a possible guest on, on the show previously, if that's something that you if that's a route that you could also take with that. So maybe the audience is already familiar with them. It, it, absolutely. For sure. All of those things are completely valid. But what what you're trying to do with a feed drop, you got to kind of think about the core purpose. The core purpose is marketing. Right. So what you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to find shows that have your listeners that, you know, not that you're going to steal them, but there's enough overlap where you feel like they could enjoy both shows. Not that you're, not that you're going to, you know, take them. So, um, that's an important distinction. So like when I had my, uh, fandom, my, my, my personal show, I would, I would feed drop with people that are like, we're absolutely niche dedicated to like Batman. And I would say, you know, Hey, it, you know, I know everybody's Batman shows. You know, we do, we do Batman, but we do a lot of other stuff. If you care about, you know, Batman's period of, you know, Arkham Asylum history or whatever it is, like you got to check out these other, this, this podcast here, we're going to play an episode. Uh, let me know what you think. 
And it, it just, it's life, it's life changing. Let me say it that way. It's life changing because your listeners now, they'll, they would never have found that Batman podcast. Never in a million years. They don't even know what to search for to have it come up. So, you know, you're, you're, you know, if you're in your whiskey show, like, maybe you want to trade with somebody who focuses on rye or home distilling in a state where it's legal or whatever, something adjacent, not exact. Well, I think that's actually definitely more helpful. Um, also in, in regards to 69 whiskey, it's, it's more of a, it's more of adult lifestyle more than drinking, but, uh, I, I, I know exactly what you mean when you say that, though. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I'm just using way, examples, still right? Still the concept still works. I get it. Yeah, yeah. And and it doesn't work if, if you don't tell people what their show is about, right? That's another thing um, that I've learned. I used to just say, hey, you know, welcome to Jim's show. Let me, you know, I'll put the links in the description. You know, thanks, Jim. And play the show. And my uh, abandon rate, I don't know, like people would make it three three to five minutes into the show and then it would go to like 60%. So what I started doing is saying, you know, hey, you know, Jim just feed dropped a show. He doesn't talk paranormal all the time, but he had this awesome ghost hunter on. He normally talks about these five things, including true crime and paranormal and other things. And he does it live. It's a badass show. But this paranormal episode that I have right now is one of my favorites. If you like it, you know, Jim's a good fan of the, the a good friend of the show and uh, we make a good team. Check it out. It is totally different. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with everything you just said there. So I, I think that little bit of clarification over the last couple of minutes has definitely been very helpful. And I appreciate you answering that for me, Greg. Not a problem. So Greg, <clears throat> there's kind of like a, I've heard a misconception with this with a lot of podcasters. They're hesitant to, let's say, feed drop on a podcast that has less downloads than they do. However, that's not always going to be an indicator of being able to get, grow your audience, especially if the niche is right. Correct? Yeah. Who you, who you swap with is much more important than how large the show is. And I have a, I have another example of this. Um, the uh, Obscure History, my, my friend Josh, who runs Excu- uh, Obscure History, he feed dropped with uh, History Daily, who does a million ep- downloads an episode, I think. So uh, a million people heard his, his podcast. And um, I think that History Daily who he, you know, he swapped with, I, I believe that they both received um, fanatics. It's the, maybe the best way to describe it because you've sifted through, you've sifted through all the looky loos, the tire kickers. You know what I mean? Like, like you, you have, people have to really love it to go to listen to an episode and go, you know what? I'm going to go into the show notes or I'm going to search for it on the podcatcher and I'm going to go find that show and I'm going to subscribe to it. Right. It's like a massive filter for quality listeners. Now it might be order of magnitude bigger, right. From the million download show for sure. But your job is to pick up listeners sometimes one at a time. So go get one listener. I agree 100%. Like I am especially like the part about having you the swap person um or whatever it's called your if you're working like in a partnership it's really important to have like the support of that person or group or whatever uh because they're the ones who are going to be like pushing the show and like you said earlier it's if somebody's like oh yeah I'm taking the week off it's different they're not really like on board with like growing your show as well um it, I think that translates to the audience and they can really pick up on that like I've done some podcasts with some pretty big people like comedians thinking that uh it would you know, grow my audience and maybe that episode, but like it didn't, like if we didn't vibe, like it wasn't an easy episode for me to like edit. 
Yeah. So that's one misconception. Having people on your show is content for your listeners. It's not really to grow it. I know, I know sometimes you can, and sometimes you get good SEO and, um, but really you want to have people on your show to provide amazing, valuable content to your listeners. Like that's why you have guests. Yeah. And now there's you can go comedians on, who are like completely different people on stage and you get like to have a conversation it, with them and they're just like, right. t- like it's, it, it's like painful. Like I had a really big comedian. I recorded a, and I can't, I couldn't use it because it was like, we just did not vibe like he obviously had never listened to one of my podcast episodes like I don't have a lot of structure I just kind of do it conversational style and it's not because like I want it to be unprepared it's more of like because I think that conversation is better when it's created between two people instead of just drilling them with questions but like I don't think that he was ready for that kind of interaction I guess I think he was more expecting me to just ask him questions yeah, I get, guests are hard because you know you have to kind of pull that conversation out of them, even if they're not, uh, even if they're it's something they're not ready for. But um, for, as far as growing your show, being on other podcasts is a great way to grow it. Um, but but yeah, having guests on your show, you know, you, you might get some SEO love from their name uh, in your title, which you should do every time put their name in your title. Um, but, uh, yeah, not, not great for, for, for growing unless you can convince them to retweet it or, or, uh, or whatever. I mean, like if you get, you know, I don't know, like a huge, huge name, you might get some residual listeners, subscribers. Yeah. I mean, my podcast, any podcaster, I can have some, uh, I've had some pretty popular podcasters on there. And a lot of the times they like an, a, like a true crime one, for example, that episode will do really, really well. And maybe just only a few people will convert over. And the only reason I know that is because they'll tell me like, hey, like now I listen to your podcast all the time. But it's it's very rare um, for them to stay after they've listened to that one episode if they're there for that particular individual. Yeah, niche is so important. And I think it's more important than ever in podcasting because, you know, with Discovery being so weak, um, people search for very specific things and, you know, you don't really have an algorithm uh, detecting shows that are like other shows and then hand feeding them to listeners. So it's really word of mouth searching in the, in the app. I mean, you can see the Edison research on how people find podcasts. I got so much, so many listeners from being featured on Apple. It's like browse. Yeah, for sure. Like I, they, my like 70% or something still, it was like two years ago. It's still like listeners are from that like eight days. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, something like that can put you on the map. The, the, the issue is the key is you have to do that stuff when you're ready. Like if you do it too early, what will happen is, is the word of mouth engine won't start properly. Like your show needs to be amazing if you're going to, you know, before you get featured on, they, on they don't Apple. even tell you when you get featured, like you have to, like, I remember looking at the stats and I had like 15 listeners and it went to like 600 overnight. And then it went to like 1500 and I thought it was like broken. Mm-hmm. Um, but you submitted, right? You just, they just I, didn't tell you when it's Yeah. Coming. They didn't tell me and they've done it in other countries and I can tell by like my stats, but it doesn't show you the browse section for those other countries, but it's really easy to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, people should, people should definitely submit to, uh, to Apple. It's free. It's free. Yeah. And and I don't, you know, people's like you, I mean, they get, they get featured. I mean, you think out of all the millions of podcasters or whatever, however many there are, that it would be tough, but I don't, I don't think as many people sign up for that as you might think. Well, it's kind of frustrating because because they have some of the same people on there all the time. And like when I was like ranking higher, when I was more consistent, like in my category, I was, you know, number 20 or whatever. And they still had like, if you go to that category, it was not my thing. And that kind of pissed me off. Like, I don't know what country because there's certain people, certain podcasts that are just on there all of the time. And like it creates like this unfair market of exposure. 
Oh, for sure. I mean, if you can get, if you can get in the top of, of the discovery of any of the categories, um, which, you know, there's a bunch of articles on how that's calculated, but if you can get up there, if your show's good, it'll stay up there. I mean, yeah, mine did for a while, but I think a lot of it has to do with how, how the algorithm displays your show when suggesting like at the bottom middle, middle suggest like, Hey, if you like this, you might like this. Right. Right. And that's, and there's, you know, if you look down there, there's only, there's very few shows that are, that are like, that are listed as if you like this, you like that. But, um, but I guess the question is, Jeff, let's go back to the topic. You have any other, Sorry. no, no, you're fine. This is good. Um, do you have any questions about fee drop or have we, have we drained this topic? I don't, I don't know if we've drained it. I would like to get uh, Jim Mallard's opinion and, and any questions he has, but I think for me, like, how do you, how would you approach this, Greg? Like people approach you about it and that's maybe, but if you're a podcaster and you're wanting to do this right, how do you approach the other podcast that you're wanting to feed Trump swap with? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's my number one struggle for indie drop in, which to me is absolutely absurd. How people just, just like the Apple, uh, thing we were just talking about, like, I should have so many shows stacked up because it's f- just free. Publicity. Yeah, I gotta it's, apply again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ready whenever you are. Um, you know, it, it should. Ju- I should just. I, I should have years of content stacked up, and I don't. I mean, true crimes probably got three months, but like you know, everything else is week to week in most in most cases where I'm out there hunting for for shows. What I would do is I would set a realistic goal of one feed drop a quarter. And while I was doing that, I would also um, do one guest spot a quarter. And you, you can guest on lots of different stuff, but a lot of times they'll, they'll want that to be a reciprocal as well. And then you're going to have a bunch of podcasters all over your history show or comedy show or whatever. And that sucks, right? So, you know, you, you want to make sure, sh- sure you stay in your niche, but, um, so I, I would, I would do a feed drop swap at first, just as you get the feel for it every quarter, you could probably do it every single month successfully and without pissing off your, um, your fans. If, if you do it right, if it makes sense, if it's, on topic, you know, all of those things that we just talked about. So what I would do is I would first, uh, search for shows that are like yours, right? So search for topics that, that you talk about, hunt for them, listen to them, see if you like them. And then I would start with people who have less than 500 reviews on Apple podcasts, maybe even under 200, right? Because these are going to be the easiest ones to contact, they're going to get the fewest responses. It's just just to ease into it, and uh, so then I would reach out to them on Instagram or Twitter. Is what I do. I would DM them. Um, Instagram is is always good. Twitter is hit or miss. Um, I like Twitter better just because it's where I spend the most of my my uh, efforts. But I would start by finding finding them and DMing them. And they'll see it's from a podcast account. And you just say, "Hey, um, I looked at your li- I looked at your episodes, and I have one about this, and you have one about that. We could swap. It would add tremendous value to both of our channels. And I really like your show. So if you check mine out, and if you think it's a good fit for a fee drop, you know, let's uh, let's swap. And they'll probably go, "What is a fee drop?" So you'll have to explain it to them. And, you know, I mean, I've had 500 podcasters feed drop to me. So it's not a unknown thing. That's the way I would do it. I would start with under 200 reviews on Apple Podcasts. Let's just say it that under 200. Now, Greg, if you're going to tell me you like my show, have listened to my show because I'm going to ask you which show you liked. And when you say all of them, I'm going to know you're full of bullshit. No, no, no. You got to no, listen I'm, I'm, closely I'm, I'm, to what I'm saying. I'm just saying. No, no, I, I know. There are so I'm many gonna... people out there that say, I love your show, man. I'm like, well, which one? Oh. No, no. What I said, what I, what, I, what I would say is 
you got to pick out the episode that you want on your show. So you say, hey, I found your show. You did an episode on this. I did an episode on this. And I think in, in neither one, you know, like we both need that content. You know I, I I'm, know. I'm, I'm just doubling down. He's cut, he's cutting out. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, know, you need to do exactly. you need to do a little talk. research on the show Podcast so that I like your show. Yeah, make no, sure we, we get you, Jim. You're breaking up. She liked your show because Yeah, make sure you know what you're talking about before you go try to sell somebody on something. Well, yeah. Well, not just that, but you have to make sure the show doesn't suck too. I mean, that, show, yeah. that would be terrible. Yeah, that's the worst case scenario. Um I honestly I I wanna I love helping indie podcasters, so I probably accept shows that probably maybe are a little bit too no, far I, away I from being ask, ready. But what? man, I felt like that was going to be a good question. Yeah. Didn't you, Jeff? Yeah. It kind of seemed like he's cutting out though. You can send it to me if you want, Jim. Yeah. <clears throat> so Greg, the other question I have for you is now I'm waiting on bated breath. Like what is Jim going to ask me? Yeah. I'm curious now, but yeah, you always want to have a plan. Like, and there's not like I there's so many things that drive me crazy and maybe I'm just it's just because I'm busy. I'm so I'm super busy. But like when people are like, hey, um, we should do this, fill out my and I go, yeah, yeah, we should. And then they go fill out my can calendarly. I'm just like, fuck that. Like you just reached out to me and asked me to do for your for help. And now you want me to go fill out your calendarly. No, I'm not going to do it. So forget it. Like that's, that's too much. Like I'm available Monday at seven before podcasting power hour. Like does it work or no? <clears throat> Jim, give it another shot. See what, see if we can get it for a minute. No. <laughs> How do you, are you say, he, he, he messaged me. Are, are, is the, when you're going out looking for interviews on other podcasts, is it the reverse order of the, the swap feed where you go into the top of reviews and trying to get the biggest show you can get? No, no, I don't think so. I, because the the most important thing is that you have something to contribute that they need and they have something to contribute that you need, right? Unless you're an absolute, unless you're the foremost expert on something that you just happen to podcast about, um, the big giant shows have access to, to guests that aren't podcasters. Right. So you're going to want to, um, and, and if, and if you are the world's foremost expert, you've already been on those podcasts as the ex, as an expert. And you probably later on decided to start a podcast, which is awesome to do by the way, if you're an expert in something, but, uh, I would, uh, I would work small, man. I would, I would work the long tail if it were me. And I would go after some big ones, right? Like if it, what it takes to get a th thousand, let's just be real. What it takes to get a thousand um, reviews on Apple podcasts is like a show that gets tens of thousands of downloads an episode, tens and tens and tens of thousands. So, um, you know, you're, you're really, you're really going for a big show. If you, if you're going in, you know, if it says like 1.2 K reviews, that's a big show on Apple podcasts. So I, w I wouldn't, I would say sub 200, if you can find them sub 500, you know, just kind of, cause just kind of work, work your way up the stack and uh, you probably find people are easier to get a hold of and much more open. Obviously the show has to be currently producing episodes. So no, no dead shows. What? I think we've hammered that pretty hard, Greg. I think we're good to take it home, man. Yeah, I think so. Are you gonna Are you gonna do weekly, or am I gonna give it a shot? You can You can close up the show. I mean, after that uh, After that amazing intro, I'm really interested to see what you come up with for an outro. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can top that. I'm losing my voice somehow. I don't know. Must be hitting puberty. <clears throat> anyway. No, I think that uh, if you're enjoying this, there is a website, podcastempowerhour.com. It's the way to go back in the catalog and listen to all the previous episodes. I even know these. it's best to come on here and interact live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can find the link always off my Twitter page. But I do think if you do want to learn some more, it, it, you really should go on. And, and on, 
on the website though and check it out. Greg, you do a really good job keeping up with that. I know you have some AI stuff tied in there, but all jokes aside, I think every episode holds a little bit of a gem that people should check out. What do you think? Yeah, we try to we try to have a nugget every episode. And the, you know, this this episode's nugget is how to feed drop, what a feed drop is, where to where to find it, and uh who to reach out to to swap them with. I mean, that's really the the moral of today's episode. You know, we go on some diatribes every once in a while and have a lot have a little fun. Um, but uh but that's really the nugget for this show, for this episode. Yeah. Sometimes it's something significant, but sometimes it's just what you can almost get from the interactions between what the, the people that are speaking as well. So all, as always, I appreciate everybody that helps out speaking wise and everybody that's listening every week. And we'll be back next Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern for another Pod Power Hour. Thank you for listening to the Podcasting Power Hour. Everyone is free to participate on Twitter spaces every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. To join, just follow Jeff at podcast underscore father or Greg at Indie Dropin. If you found this podcast helpful, go into your podcast app and write a quick review. Other podcasters will see it and know this show is worth listening to. Also, I'll put a few links in the show notes for ways you can support the show. I think by now you know we love our coffee. Have a great week.